Welcome to the On Deck Podcast presented by Line Star. I'm Shannon Somerville here with Tyler Weeman, about to break down some of your daily fantasy baseball slate for today. We'll also have some prop bets mm-hmm. and our home run calls, get to some weather conditions as well. First things first, kind of a crazy story that we just saw <laughs> yes. on the internet. And all the interwebs. Yeah. So Zach Davies, who yes. is a pitcher for the Diamondbacks, yes. his wife, I believe, went on a bit of an Instagram, posted on Instagram yeah, that he ghosted her for over a year. They've been married yeah. since 2016, so this is a, and, his wife of six years. And That's, together for 10 years. That's wild. So apparently... According to her Instagram post, he cut off all communication mm-hmm. and blocked her. She, I guess at the time that this started, she was in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Was he with the Padres at the time? No, he was with the Cubs at the time. Okay. And just ghosted her. Just? Just, just sent her a text at 6 a.m. and said something. The oh, wife didn't man. specify what that text said, but he immediately blocked her. After sending a 6 a.m. text. So she said on her Instagram that she had to file for divorce without having a yes. single conversation. Good news is she signed the divorce papers on Monday. You know. Yeah. He was also on. apparently having an affair, which she Ooh. only found out through word of mouth. I mean, that's just sad. He, ha- just, he hasn't said anything about it. About he it hasn't said yet. a thing about yeah. it. He's still go- he's just ghosting everybody. He's, yeah, now he's he's good at oh it now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the story is wild though. It, it is absolutely crazy. I mean to go a full year with a person you spent ten years with uh is crazy. At least there's no kids involved. Yeah, that's the so, I guess the silver so, so, man. Yeah. If there was a kid though, like how would you even explain that? Oh, brutal. Like, I don't, I mean, sorry, it's dad. Just, I don't know where dad is. I don't know what he's doing, but there he is on TV. Well, I, I mean, hopefully she'll get a nice, maybe get a nice um, settlement in it, maybe. She probably will. I'm sure those DMs Not a fan are of ghosting. Can we just stop ghosting people? I'm sure, sure those DMs of hers are, are just, pretty full right now. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Best of luck to her. We still haven't heard from Davies, though. So yeah, I wonder. Stories to be continued. Exactly. Well, we're just going to continue on with our chalk report for today. We're not ghosting anyone. We're not like that. We're here. We're going to talk to you about our high-owned pitchers for today. The first one we're going to start with is Max Scherzer, Mm -hmm. the righty for the Mets, going up against the Cardinals today. He's about 41% owned on DraftKings, 35% on FanDuel. And what is there to say about Mad Max? Top 20 mm-hmm. in ERA and whip, fourth in strikeouts. Last time he faced the Cardinals, which was about a month ago, seven scoreless innings, giving mm-hmm. up just two hits, 10 strikeouts. Mm-hmm. So not surprised to see him as a high-owned guy for today. I guess the question is, is he going to be worth it? I mean, there are a lot of really good pitchers in this yeah, slate. Yeah, there really so, are. But it is Max Scherzer. He is great. I wouldn't fade him just on ownership. Uh, but Seattle is average versus righties. They only strike out 20%. Uh, one thing is that Scherzer is, I think, has the fourth highest combined K rate on the slate. And some of the lower owned guys are higher than him with the combined K rate. And then against St. Louis, he's been spectacular. 136 plate attempts. They're hitting 148 against him. And striking out 37% of the time. So even though that combined K K rate is a little lower, he's been great against St. Louis. Yeah, I mean, 10 strikeouts, come on. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next high-owned pitcher, which is New York Yankees, Garrett Cole. He's going up against the Orioles today, 40% owned on DraftKings, 26 on FanDuel. Now he's got a 2.95 ERA, another guy top 20 in strikeouts. He has nine or more strikeouts in three of his four performances going up against the Orioles today. Top five in strikeouts. So what do you mm-hmm. see from Cole today? Yeah, the 
the strikeouts for Baltimore, they strike out 23% versus righties. They are about average in WRC plus versus righties, mm-hmm. too. Uh, and then Cole also, like Scherzer, has been great against his opponent, uh, Baltimore. Mm-hmm. 83 plate attempts. They're hitting 194 and striking out 30.5%. Uh, the combined K rate is fifth on the slate at uh, 26.3. So he's just under Scherzer for the combined K rate. But all in all, he's in a good spot. Ownership kind of makes sense. However, there are other pitchers that are cheaper and have similar upside. Yeah. I saw the line for him for strikeouts. Mm -hmm. I think it's seven and a half. Yeah. You taking me over there? Uh, Probably not. Putting you on the spot? No, I figured it was a little high. I was like, "Mm." I. Scherzer's is a little bit higher, too. Well, it's also at 7.5, but it's, like, minus 150 or Ah, 60. Ah, so a little better Uh, value there. Whereas Cole, I think, was, like, minus 130. Yeah. We like plus money on this show. Yeah. Or at least as close to it as we can get. Not getting it today, though. (laughs) Not with those Mm pitchers' strikeouts. Next up, we have Toronto ready Kevin Gosman, who's Mm -hmm. been awesome this season. Today, going up against the Mariners. 29% owned on DraftKings, 17% on FanDuel. Top 15 in ERA, whip and strikeouts. Hasn't given up more than three earned runs in an outing. And he hasn't given up a home run this season. Not only Mm -hmm. that, but the strikeout numbers eight or more strikeouts in four of five starts. So what do you see from him today against the Mariners? Yeah, I mean, he's been just incredible. The Mariners are a top 10 offense versus righties. However, Gosman has a league leading 0.82 fit, and he's only allowing 0.4 walks per nine. So simply, his location has been insane. He's been striking out guys, not walking batters has the best FIP in the league, and the combined K rate today is the third highest at uh, 27.5. So a little more strikeout upside maybe sure. with him today, but it's a little tougher matchup, which yeah. is why ownership's like, a little against lower. the Mariners. Yeah, I yeah. guess I didn't realize how good they are. the Mariners are against right-handed pitching because they're you know, middle of the pack maybe for total hitting, but I, I guess yeah. against righties they, they I, fared pretty well. At the end of the year, I would imagine their offense is towards the top 10. Yeah. Just because it's like Winker has been super slow. As uh, Ryan told me the other day, he had to wash off the Reds. He had to wash the Reds off him. So it just took a little time. (laughs) Now he's uh, coming into form, you know. (laughs) (laughs) As most people do that leave the Reds. All right. (laughs) Let's take a look at our low-owned pitchers for today. See where we can maybe exploit some of the leverage plays mm-hmm. here and we'll start with angels righty shohei otani showtime versus the rangers 27 mm-hmm. percent owned on DraftKings, just three percent on FanDuel, 278 era he's really only had one bad outing the entire mm-hmm. season ironically it was against the rangers a little over a month ago he gave up six earn in three and two thirds against them since then though he hasn't given up more than two earned runs in a start this guy's top 20 in strikeouts shohei Always a good play, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he is amazing. Texas is also a bottom five offense versus righties. They strike out at 22%. Otani, over the last five games, has a 33% K rate. And so the combined K rate today is 28%, which is the second highest on the slate. So it is better than all three of the higher own pitchers. Do you know what, which one is the highest? Of, was it? I do, and we what? haven't got to them yet. Okay, okay. Oh, that's a tease. <laughs> Stay tuned, folks. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, he has the most upsli- upside as any other pitcher on the slate, and you're getting an ownership discount. And even though he got beat up by Texas, mm-hmm. it doesn't really scare me again. All right. Well, let's go to – Chicago White Sox righty Lucas mm-hmm. Giolito versus the Royals, 18% on on DraftKings, about 2% on FanDuel. Coming off the COVID list, 270 ERA last mm-hmm. outing, one earned run, six hits, one walk, five strikeouts, and seven innings pitch. Has, he has allowed one run or fewer in three of five starts. It's a good pitcher. And is this the guy that has the highest yes. strikeout? He has okay. the highest combined K rate on the slate. Mm-hmm. Um, that that's why I mentioned every single one and like ranked them today is because the lower owned guys 
have a little more K upside than the higher owned guys. So I wanted to kind of make a note of that to everybody. But Giolito and Otani are in super some more spots. As far as righties, KC has an 81 WRC plus. Texas had an 84. Uh, KC does strike out a little bit less than Texas. They're at 21.6%. But Mm -hmm. Giolito has a 34%. K rate over the last five games where Otani had 34 or 33. Uh, all of that makes him highest uh, combined K rate on the slate. Another thing I'd like to add is that Salvador Perez is on the IL. So it's another, Ooh. another hitter, good hitter in that uh, offense. It won't be there. There you go. Nice matchup mm-hmm. for Giolito. Like that play there. All right. We got to, because you got to find a little value. And, you know, there's guys you, like Scherzer. You know, everyone's going to jump on Scherzer. And the and other – outside of those pitchers, there's a huge drop-off in upside today. Okay. I think Dane like, Dunning – so those five. Yeah, those and then, five. And then it's it's kind of kind of difficult. I mean, if on FanDuel there is Snell and Wheeler, you could put up there too. But then on DraftKings, it's – Really, right. Dane Dunning's probably yeah. the next. Sure. But um, right, because the the FanDuel slate. Yeah, because they have a, a few more games. The Padres, the Phillies, mm-hmm. and Marlins. Yeah, Marlins. Versus who? It's Live Laugh Lopez. <laughs> we just know that it's Live <laughs> Laugh Lopez. Who, I like him. I you know I always like some pop. You just Lopez. like the story. You like the story. It's a cool story. I like yeah. to see him kind of dominating right now. Best ERA in baseball right now. He is doing great. Let's talk about our stacks now. Yeah. High on stacks for today. Of course, we're going to talk about the Yankees going up against a Baltimore righty, Jordan Lyles today, who's got a 438 ERA, 294 opponent average. So mm-hmm. against the Yankees lineup. And the Yankees are hitting 322 against him with five home runs and 106 plate attempts. Okay. So, yeah, but, understandably, <sighs> Yankees are just so The Yankees are so, so hot right now, right now mm-hmm. that their ownership should pretty much just be put into, like, the Coors field ownership <laughs> because it's like wow. they're going to be the highest owned until this hot streak ends. Mm-hmm. They're playing great. They're hitting the ball. Lyles is just an okay pitcher, 4.42 FIP. He's only allowing 1.2 home runs per nine, but uh, Yankees are the second best versus righties. I really don't need to go into all the detail about how great the Yankees are. <laughs> okay, or you just don't <laughs> want to. A little you can You can wax poetic about my Yankees. It's okay. I won't mind. <laughs> all right, we'll leave it for another day. Yes. Chicago Cubs are going up against Pirates righty mm-hmm. Will Crow today. Now, Crow's been excellent in relief. This is one mm-hmm. of those situations, probably a bullpen game type of situation. Yeah, I would be surprised if he even finishes two full innings. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has been stretched out enough to go for two full innings, but he'll probably have to be a little efficient to do that. But bullpen game, uh, Pittsburgh has a six-worth bullpen in the league. They're walking almost four batters per nine, allowing one home run per nine. But I would like to add that... Most of the time, a relief pitcher comes in in an advantageous situation. Sure. In a bullpen game, they're not really able to do that, especially the Pittsburgh bullpen, which has been used a lot lately. Mm -hmm. So I would expect that one per nine uh, home run rate and the four per nine walk rate to probably be a little bit worse in a situation like this and a a little higher FIP as well. Uh, So the Cubs look great. It's okay. interesting, too, with that uh, theory of, you know, the opener, right? Mm-hmm. Because for a team like the Pirates, does it make sense, really? <laughs> when I get the theory that, right, it's it's about exploiting the fact that the hitters aren't facing the same pitcher, so they, they aren't adjusting yeah. to it. You're, you're avoiding that. Yeah, I, I think with through. Pittsburgh, it's just more so that they're in a tough spot right now with some injuries and just lack of starters. Sure. Uh, but Cubs are a def- decent offense. They've been hot, mm-hmm. so not surprised to see him up there. It's also the best pitching situation. Sure. Let's take a look at our low-owned mm-hmm. stacks for today. Maybe find some value. And Toronto Blue Jays are going up against Mariners lefty 
uh, Marco Gonzalez today, mm-hmm. fourth in home runs allowed this season. Lefties are crushing him. Mm-hmm. 469 opponent average, 875 slugging, 1361 OPS for left handed bats. Um, I was actually looking, Matt Chapman is actually 13 for 33, including a home run against Gonzalez, has great numbers against him, even mm-hmm. though Chapman's numbers this year haven't been great at all. Like, yeah. They've been pretty abysmal. But he could have a good matchup today. So not just Chapman, but the entire Toronto. Yeah, there there are several Toronto Blue Jays that look great. I wish Toronto had some more lefties. Right. They are very Mm righty-heavy, but they're still league average against lefties. Uh, Gonzalez has a 6.2 FIP. He's been allowing 2.3 home runs per nine. And Toronto is the highest implied total on the slate. So... It would make sense for them to be the higher stack. They should be higher owned then, no? They should. Yeah. I I think a big reason is just they don't have many lefties. Got it. Well, when you have Vladi, come on. They they have so many good hitters. It doesn't really matter that much. (laughs) Also, the Mariners bullpen gives up a ton of home runs, tied for six most. So even if it's not Gonzalez anymore, Mm -hmm. um, their bullpen gives up a lot of pops. Let's now look at the Mets going up against St. Louis Cardinals righty Jordan Hicks. So another play here. So Hicks doesn't go too deep into Mm -hmm. games. I was looking through his stats. He's coming off his deepest outing of the year, which was Mm -hmm. only five innings. He does have a 176 opponent average, and he hasn't given up more than actually three hits in an outing, Mm -hmm. but he just doesn't go very long into a game. He's actually Line Star's lowest projected pitcher in the main slate for today. What are you looking at with the Mets here? Yeah, I mean Hicks. Hicks has been okay. He, the last uh, outing that you mentioned was the most pitches he's had, yeah. which was seventy-seven. He uh, he's always been well. He was going to be a starter as a prospect, and then he ran into some trouble. They made him a reliever, and now they're transition and back to starter so they've been very slow with stretching him out I see so that's why he hasn't gone very deep but he's also walking five batters per nine Can't have so that. that's <laughs> exactly that is not walks a couple batters efficient. gives up a timely hit mm-hmm. and runs have scored against him Mets are also six best in WRC plus and they're also affordable so you can pay up for some of those pitchers you want. And they have a four implied total. So it's Put in not, the polar bear, Pete Alonzo. I don't Let's mind go. the polar bear today <laughs> at all. <laughs> Let's take a look at yes. the last low stack of the day. The Angels are going up against mm-hmm. Texas righty Dane Dunning, who has a 406 ERA coming off his worst outing of the year. He gave up five earned runs in five and two thirds against the Red Sox mm-hmm. and those Angels bats. Nothing to sneeze at, folks. Absolutely. And this this is a high variance spot. I talked about it a little bit earlier where Dunning isn't ba- a bad pitcher. However, the Angels have done very well against him. Uh, in 30 plate attempts, small sample size, so don't look too much into that. They are hitting 481 against him and have two home runs. Uh, however, Dunning has a 2.77 FIP. Over the last five, four point one nine over the last twenty. I would expect he's more that four point one nine uh pitcher. And the Angels have a decent implied total at four point two, which is not too far off Toronto, which is the highest one. So I I could see them hitting Dunning and getting him out of the game a little early. And if that happens, you got the Texas bullpen, which is awful. Well, there you go. <laughs> what for this stack? Would this, with the variance being high on this mm-hmm. one, would you depend, does it depend on what kind of contest you're playing for this particular stack or does this apply across the board? Uh, you could play them in in any uh, contest. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have too much of them. Okay. They're going to be lower owned, so you can use them, but don't go too crazy. The, the one weird thing, though, with uh, the Angels when Otani is pitching He's also the best or second best hitter, but you can't use him as a hitter on these uh-huh. days because you're using him as a pitcher. Good point. So stacking the Angels on days he pitches can be a little weird. They need to 
to change that. Come I, on. You do need to be able to put him in either spot, I think. Let the man but, yeah. and pitch. It, in it's just weird. I mean, it's a situation uh, yeah. we've never dealt with right. until the last couple of years. Tani's just so. awesome. Yes. All right, so insane. those are some great value plays for you. And if you want to optimize your yes. lineup or help yourself in these daily fantasy contests, be sure to sign up for the LineStar app. You can go to linestarapp.com, check it out. We just had a brand new makeover on the site, new ownership, everything mm-hmm. is awesome there. So check that out for sure. Now it's time for our mm-hmm. home run calls yesterday. Two for Both two, baby. Of us. Home run, oh, shimmy. shimmy. The shimmy is happening. There we go. Shimmy is happening. We, we crushed it yesterday. So today, pressure's on. Let's go. See if we got to run it back. Two in a row. Who are you going with? I am going with the Blue Jays with Teoscar Hernandez. Gonzalez okay. giving up 2.3 home runs per nine. Hernandez has a 410 Woba and 310 ISO versus righties. So I'm having him go yard today. I like where your head's at because I'm also sticking with the Blue Jays going Bo Bichette. He'll be facing, of course, Mariners lefty Marco Gonzalez, who's allowing the fourth most home runs of any any pitcher this season. Mariners bullpen also gives up a ton Mm. of home runs. They're six in home runs allowed. Now, Bichette's actually been better against Southpaws this season, 526, 524 slugging rather, and he's just been heating up lately. Uh, furthermore, four of his home runs have been at the Rogers Center. Well, he only he's only had four home runs, so all of his home runs have been at the Rogers Center. Uh, that's at plus 440 if you want to throw some money down on it. Also, his bases prop, uh, one and a half bases, that's plus money, plus 115. Get out there and get Just after it. All over Boba Shet. Yeah, there we go, Boba like Shet. All right, now let's take a look at our prop bets for today. Another awesome outing for us yes. yesterday with our prop bets. Two for two. Just crushing it. Yep. Love to see it. Two for two Tuesday. Two for two Tuesday. Yeah. Love it. All right. Let's take a look at our prop bets. Where are you headed for today? I am going with the White Sox starter, Lucas Giolito, over okay. 5.5 Ks at minus 130. When I saw this line, I thought it was a joke. I thought it was too low. I still think it's too low. Uh, Gio has hit it in four or five starts and against KC, he's hit it in seven of his last 11 starts. He also has the highest combined K rate on the slate. So Lucas Giolito going over 5.5 Ks. I like that. That's mm-hmm. a really good value there. And then yeah. let's go and digging for props today. I also got some value for you. Josh Donaldson over one and a half bases. That is at plus 125. He's been heating up in the month of May today going up against Jordan Lyles. Now, Josh Donaldson has much better splits against righties, 303 average versus them. And he's 5 for 10 against Lyles. Small sample size, but still, you like when a guy has a little confidence Mm -hmm. in the box knowing that he's owning the opposing pitcher. Also has great numbers at Camden Yards as well. So take that over one and a half bases plus 125. I like it. I like it. I almost used him. I almost used him as my home run. You did? I was this close. And that gives me a little more confidence. I like uh, it. All right. We're on the same same page today with our home runs and prop bets for sure. Great minds. (laughs) Great minds. Think alike. Let's go to our weather. we got a few conditions for you to take note of in your daily fantasy for today and your prop bets as well. So Padres at Phillies. This one will be dry to start. Light rain will move in late. So this is for the FanDuel slate Mm -hmm. mostly, so keep that in mind. Yankees at Baltimore, another dry start, light rain situation. It should come in later in the game and not be too heavy. So Mm -hmm. not too much weather conditions, which we like to see, you know. We do. Let's get some warmer temperatures. Get some more home runs. Get some more home runs. runs. That we, of course, call in our home run props. Yep. And uh, a public service announcement. Stop ghosting. Oh, boy. Stop ghosting, people. Zach Davies. Yeah, that's that's Let's rough. Let's do better, people. All right. All right. So don't ghost us either, okay? Write some comments down. Yes. Subscribe, comment on YouTube. Love to see your comments. So let us know what's going on, how you're doing in Daily Fantasy. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one. See you guys.